Joseph and then Robert. There were the first three of them. Oh, three of mm-hmm. Robert and Dale. And then oh, Robert. Did. Okay. And Joseph. Dale. Okay. I thought Robert Dale was one person, though. Robert sure Dale is one person. That's okay. Not two. Yeah. Robert Dale Owens. He gave the spiritual commandment to Emma Hardage. Oh. And the interesting thing is it's recorded twice. It's recorded that she received them in the United States during one of her trips. And it's also recorded that she received them in England. What was Emma Hardage? Um, she was an opera singer who became a spiritualist teacher, medium. I don't know if she channeled. Um, I've got one of her books available in the back. She gives a wonderful history of spiritualism. She was friends with the Fox sisters, all three of them. And she traveled from one end of the country to the other. She talks about different ways a seance can be done, the different ways messages can be done. It's, it's a very good book. So, but most people are familiar with the Tenth Commandment that Robert gave. And it's a summarization of all that came before it. That's where you get the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man. All of that is all a part of that last commandment. And that's the way they put it. What's his name? Robert Owen, I think it's Robert Owen Dale. And I don't know if it was him or his son. Because they're senior and junior. And one of them founded the the Smithsonian. And they were both part of the free thought movement. Senior uh, was the one who provided a hall to Reverend Irving's group. He was Quakers. They were Quakers. And Indian souls started visiting them. And the members put his group out of the church. And Robert made his hall available to them. And uh, they did that for, I think, a couple of years, maybe three years. And then they stopped. And before they stopped, they said they would be back in five years. And five years later, the Fox sisters demonstrated the first public seance with the knockings. Almost five years, not quite, but very close to it. So that's who Robert was. So, and... Ah, uh, we'll begin with Sandy. What What are your thoughts, Sandy? Oh, so interesting. So much information um, packed into that short time. Um, I wrote some things down, but I, I, you know, I wanted to listen. <laughs> and I'll, if, if we have it uh, printed out, then I can look at it again. But, um. It was uh, it, it it was great it was great um, like I say so much knowledge passed into a, a short time um, I like the I like uh, the part about um, the kindness and that. Um, um, you are part of the light now, and you don't have to pass over to uh, experience it. It's right here. I really, I really like that. Um, uh, and that nurturing brings wisdom. I just wrote certain points down because I, I am 
so that's what I'm referencing now. But um, it, it it was so it was so enlightening, it, and, and it, I, I just like the way he presented everything. It just uh, came out, you know, very natural, very focused. Um, I really liked it. <laughs> That's great. Good, good. And what are your thoughts, Beth? Oh, I was just really excited. Who was the third one? Because I noticed your voice changed, and it's like... It, he was talking, like, excuse this one. He's so enthusiastic, so it's like, well, it doesn't sound like Robert Dale, because he was really forceful. So who was that third one? Couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell me. But anyway, um... Probably a mediator. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... I really belonged on to, um... There's a different body for every realm. Mm -hmm. And that, it's like, oh, that makes sense in some of the experiences I've had in some of my meditations where I, I, would, I was a different life form. So, oh, that makes so much sense. Oh, okay. I'm not having a psychotic break. <laughs> I'm recovering a lost memory. Mm -hmm. um, and I also glommed it onto... Not to focus on my reaction or my worry about how someone's going to react to me. Because that's a boulder. <laughs> mm -hmm. That finding that I keep, had kept my mouth shut. Um, because being afraid someone's going to poo-poo me. Because that's what I experienced all through childhood. Um, but you said I'm supposed to be the mediator or you're, the message you gave me last week uh, to be the, the medium for my cousin Tom soul. The rest of the family is like, I'm not going to say a damn word. <laughs> Aww. But then he came to me when he died, so he did? Oh, there was a shadow appeared in my Ooh. I think my mom was a precursor because I was doing dishes and I felt her in the room so I don't know if she was just kind of Preparing, preparing me. Mm -hmm. Asked her if she liked the new cat and if she was going to help me with the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> and then a few hours later, the shadow appeared in my living room. So, mm -hmm. And that was probably the time that I found the following day that he had died about 7.15 the previous night. So, so I need to keep that in mind. Not to, if it comes just to say it, then it's like, Yes, they're going to poo-poo you. They're going to think you're weird. They're going to lock you up. Like, well, so what? Vacation. <laughs> I really just have to get over that, that mm -hmm. childhood mm -hmm. shell. It's, it's difficult. It's, it's yeah. difficult. Mm -hmm. It took me quite a while to, to overcome that. Mm -hmm. So, good. Good. Mm. Any thoughts, Jerry, you'd like to share? Jerry does channeling as well. Okay, so something that stood out in my mind is when one of them said, um, heaven is here on earth. And in the past, I've heard that heaven is up there and Hades is right here on earth. I mean, but then that's your perspective on what you're doing with your life. Um, so, if we have a combination of both Hades and Heaven here, one being dark, black, and one being white, the combination together is gray. And I've heard, if your favorite color is gray, you have a sick mind. But anyway, <laughs> that, that's a pure <laughs> um, So I, I think it's a matter of choice, you know, figuring out what you're going to accept in your life and what you're going to give out in your life as far as creating your heaven here on earth. And we all have to deal with earth stuff. Sometimes crap, hopefully more good. But um, hopefully I'm getting to the 
end of dealing with the crack stuff and getting over all of that. And I, and I think there's a cycle coming that in another six months, more of us will be dealing with peace and love and better communications for whatever reason. I'll leave that with you, Dr. Ross. Yeah. yeah. Everything operates in a cycle. You see it in history, you see it in nature, you look at your life and you'll see it. What are your thoughts, Ken? It's something my dad you know, told me a few times when he started taking the spirit circles, is that when they are speaking to you, they want you to respond to them and ask questions or comments. Obviously, when the channeler is speaking, you should be polite and let the message come through, but then there is a time for you to speak, and you should, because if you don't say anything, they don't know whether they're getting through to you or not. So you should say something. Something good to keep in mind. So, Any thoughts, Connie? I agree with what he was saying, and for the most part, I just found it peaceful. Good. That's even better I yet. Did I say something good? You yes, you did. You did. <laughs> <laughs> I need help for my girls. <laughs> So, what are your thoughts, Sharon? Well, I really liked it a lot, and um, I, I tried to take notes too, but I did leave some things out because I wanted to listen as well. Um, you know, the, 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 he, he mentioned the Joseph about the life, like people live in a thousand years, and, and you know, I've always wondered, because in the Bible, you know, there are these people that are like eight, nine hundred years old, and it always seems kind of totally outrageous for us because we get to, you know, we get to a hundred and we're, you know, we're done. Or, <laughs> or earlier. But, you know, we're just done. We just, you know, we're, we just can't do that. And so, and he, but he said, um, somehow they became misled. Hmm. People became misled. Um, all able to cross, able to I think it was accept or something, all information, but then um, they were somehow misled and they don't know why it went from that existence of life that many years to what we know today as as our um, our lifespans, which which had really gone up and up uh, over the years. I mean, every year I think it's probably a, you know, a little bit higher. So, um, it's, it's interesting if we'll ever, as a humanity, will ever get to that point again. That'd be kind of interesting. Anyway, it was just, right. I thought it was very good. Our, our physical frames are also growing. True, true. I mean, and, and we're getting taller, or I mean, as a people. We're, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And hopefully healthier, but not everybody. But there's, there's some gray area there, but you're right, that uh, because... You know, there's a lot of information about out there about health, but um, there's also a lot of bad stuff out there, so food and all this other stuff. But anyway, it, it's very interesting. I liked it. Um, get rid of the sandbags. I like that. Yep. Part. <laughs> um, uh, he said something about the fact that there were a lot of balloons around when he was here. Yeah, yeah. There were a lot of balloons here when I was here, I said, but I think... When you get rid of the sandbags, the balloons will take you. You'll get lighter. Get lighter. Good way to look at it. Yeah. Um, and that kindness does that. So, anyway, very good. Very good. Well, two things. One thing that comes to mind when we're talking about being misled is there's this favorite line of mine um, on a Blue Oyster Cult song <laughs> that says, Nature 
likes to point out the folly of mankind. Oh, yeah. So. Interesting. Nature may have just, all right, let's. And then the other thing is, um, right after the Civil War, balloons became popular because they used the balloons during the war. So, any thoughts, Sydney? No. I, I think that, you know, when we have to let go of our past, we're not told the truth about a lot of things the way life is, you know, our parents taught us that if they told us things like, oh, you're not good enough or something, that's a lie. Mm -hmm. So you have to let go of the lies you were told. And I think that everybody, if everybody showed the beauty that they have inside of them, the world would have no problem. And we'd all be wearing shoes. And it's all inside of us, naturally. Exactly. Yes. Yep. We'd all be wearing shades because we our future would be so bright. <laughs> God gave us the ability to be kind to everybody. You know? It's already in us. Exactly. So you have to let go of that, what you were told in the past. Sandbags. Yeah. Sandbags. And you have to keep in mind. And you can't yeah. judge people. No. The well, way your parents raised you, you can't judge them because they had it hard too. And when they taught us, they were still kids. Yeah. They were still kids. And people say and do the wrong things all the time, you know, just like little kids do, you know. Just, you have to be like a little child. You have to, they say what's on their mind, then they go back to playing, you know, just forget it, you know. Let it go. You see that in nature. See that in nature. Well, with that, I want to thank all of you for your input, your thoughts, and everything, your energy. And uh, we're going to take a little bit of a break so you can all stand up.